this presentation today is the exterior elevated elements EEE or E3 inspection law for apartment buildings. A uh, quick disclaimer, uh, at the end of the day, please consult with your licensed design professional uh, and read the law itself to be able to confirm, uh, conform accordingly. Uh, I will be your presenter today. I am Jean-Claude Olivier, Senior Inspector with Code Enforcement. So a brief overview of the City of Los Angeles SCAP and complaint inspection process. Uh, throughout the city, there's roughly 3.9 million residents, 60% of which are renters. And that uh, makes up about 800,000 rental units throughout the city. Now, back in the 90s, there was uh, dilapidated housing abundantly throughout the city. And as a result, the Blue Ribbon Committee uh, was uh, was uh, put a report together to, to determine how to tackle that situation. Uh, what was born out of that report is the Systematic Code Enforcement Program. Now, the Los Angeles Housing Department is responsible for conducting SCEP and complaint inspections of the city's multifamily residential housing. SCEP inspections, again, systematic code enforcement inspections. The purpose is to verify that existing residential rental properties, buildings, units, and structures comply with the applicable provisions of laws, regulations, codes set forth in the Los Angeles Housing Code as to maintenance, sanitation, ventilation, use, occupancy, and enforcement of those requirements governing any alteration, addition, or repair. To know with, if your property falls within these systematic code enforcement uh, inspections, if you would be subject to it, your property has, a, has to have at least two units on the lot, and you would be subject to a SCEP inspection at least once every four years. Some properties are subject to a, a SCEP inspection every two years. Uh, that's on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the property conditions. What the inspection process entails, well, first, uh, not notices are mailed and posted. Uh, at the property, uh, a notice will be mailed to the property owner of record and sent out to the tenants as well. Uh, at the inspection, we're inspecting all apartments, all common areas, and the exterior of the building. If violations are found, uh, we will issue an order and conduct a reinspection. If everything's corrected, we will then close the case. If not, we can grant an extension or refer the case to a hearing for further enforcement. Our complaint inspection process, complaints can be filed online, by phone or in person. Uh, at four complaints, uh, we try to schedule the complaint uh, soon after, after receiving it. Uh, we will go out there, conduct the inspection. Uh, if violations are found, issue an order, and then same process, conduct a re-inspection. If everything's corrected, then we will close the case. If not, we can grant an extension or then refer the case to a general manager's hearing for further enforcement. Urgent complaints, uh, we try to schedule those as soon as possible in an expeditious manner to get out there and address the issue. Now, turning back towards the exterior elevated elements uh, or E3 inspection law that we'll be focusing on today, uh, this all derived out of the Berkeley incident, a catastrophic balcony failure that occurred in Berkeley uh, in 2015. So as we could see at the picture on the right, uh, this is really what spurred all of this. Uh, that balcony failure resulted in injuries and loss of six lives. In the Contractor State License Board uh, accusation against the contractor who worked on the building, the board alleged that the floor joists installed on the balcony of the affected unit were not pressure treated and that instead of plywood called for in the design plans, a thinner composite material was used. In addition, a subcontractor hired by the contractor to waterproof the balcony did not install a membrane that would have made it waterproof. Here's another photo from the front with the affected area. So that balcony just collapsed to the, the balcony down below. And here's an up close photo of the floor joists where the balcony cantilevered out. Uh, if we could see, uh, there's extensive dry rot due to water damage to that improper waterproofing of the balcony. Now, that event happened in Berkeley. Taking a look at these snippets from across the country, unfortunately, this event is becoming more and more common. Uh, we see similar events in Malibu, Daly City, 
Chicago. So that's really the purpose of why these inspections are being called for now. So as a result, the health and safety code section 18924.5 was added, which required the California Building Standards Commission to form a working group to review available documents and reports, including forensic reports, reports and studies relied upon in the development of national and state building codes, and any other available material related to the construction and maintenance of exterior elevated elements. The working group was tasked with assisting in the development of a report to appropriate policy committees of the legislature by January 1st of 2018. The report would include findings, possible recommendation for changes in law, and or amendments to the California Building Standards Code. Here's one of the key findings, findings uh, finding number eight. Periodic post-occupancy inspection is critical to preventing the failure of existing EEEs. As such, there needs to be post-occupancy inspection and the requirement for this post-occupancy inspection needs to be strengthened. We recommend that the state agencies encourage local jurisdictions to implement a periodic post-occupancy inspection program for EEEs. Legislation may be required to allow state agencies to implement such local programs. We would encourage the legislature to write the enabling legislation in a way to allow the appropriate agencies to develop these programs rather than having programs set forth in detail in the legislation. Finally, uh, SB 721, the balcony inspection law, includes the post-occupancy periodic inspections recommended by that working group in finding number eight by adding section 17973 to the California Health and Safety Code. This bill establishes inspection and repair requirements for exterior elevated elements, EEEs as defined, including decks and balconies for buildings with three or more multifamily dwelling units, establishes reporting and repair requirements if repairs are needed, including specific timelines for carrying out the repairs, spec uh, specifies who can complete the inspections and repairs, and provides civil penalties for violations for building owners as specified. Section 17973 to the California Health and Safety Code has been codified in the state housing law and is now commonly known as EEE, or again, E3, or the balcony inspection law. Uh, it defines the scope of the law and the requirements and how to comply. So why are these periodic inspections required? Well, again, the purpose of this inspection is to determine that the exterior elevated elements and their associated waterproofing elements are in a generally safe condition adequate working order and free from any hazardous condition caused by fungus, deterioration, decay, or improper alteration to the extent that life, limb, health, property, safety, or welfare of the public or the occupants is not in danger. Uh, these next photos are just some continued examples of why these inspections uh, are necessary. Typically, you have this balcony here, this would be covered by stucco or siding, and this dry rot uh, wouldn't be, uh, nobody would know it, 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 that this wood is even rotted. Uh, should this continue over time, uh, as long as we get these other photos, that situation would just get worse and worse. Continued rot would continue to occur. And eventually, although this seems dramatic, this is the reality of what could happen. So you own a, or live at a multifamily property. How do you know if your building is subject to this new balcony inspection law? Well, this chart gives a simplified answer to that. Does your building have three or more units? Yes, then you would move forward. If no, then we could stop right there. No E3 inspection will be required. So you've said yes, your building does have three or more units. Does your building have wood frame exterior elements? If it does not, then no, an E3 inspection is not required. If it does, is your building classified as an apartment building? If it's not, that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't need an inspection, but you would turn towards the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety for further guidance, as they would be the authority having jurisdiction for your property. But if it is an apartment building, then an E3 inspection is required by a licensed professional, and that would be followed up by the Los Angeles Housing Department. So what is an, 
exterior elevated element under the law. Is it a balcony, deck, porch, stairway, walkway, or entry structure? Yes. Does it extend beyond the exterior of the wall? Yes. Does it have a walking surface that is elevated more than six feet above ground level? Yes. Is it designed for human occupancy or use? Yes. Does it rely in whole or substantial part on wood or wood-based products for structural support? If you've said yes to all of these, then yes, it is in an exterior elevated element under the law. If one of these are no, or if you're unsure about one of these, again, please consult with a licensed professional for further guidance. These are just some more common examples. These exterior balconies for these units would be considered an exterior elevated element. This common walkway for the, serving these apartment units upstairs and the staircase itself is an exterior ele, elevated air element. And again, this exterior staircase is also an E3. So who can perform these inspections? Well, that could be a licensed architect, a licensed civil or structural engineer, a building contractor holding any or all of the A, B, or C5 license classifications issued by the Contractor State License Board with a minimum of five years experience as a holder of the aforementioned classifications or licenses in constructing multifamily wood frame buildings, an individual certified as a building inspector or building official from a recognized state, national, or international association as determined by the local jurisdiction. However, these individuals cannot be employees of the city while performing these inspections. They must be a third party member. Just for uh, reference, again, for contractors, an A license is a general uh, engineering contractor, a B license is a general building contractor, and a C5 license is framing and rough carpentry contractor. Initial and periodic inspections. So what is the, when do these inspections have to be completed by? The inspections shall be completed by January 1st of 2025. And this is a repeating inspection. So it has to happen every six years by January 1st. The inspection of buildings for which a permit, a building permit has been submitted on or after January 1st of 2019 shall occur no later than six years following the issuance of a certificate of occupancy. So for all existing buildings built prior to 2019, again, by 20, uh, January 1st of 2025, you have to have this inspection completed and every six years thereafter, if you have a brand new building, let's say you just built a building today or a building for which the certificate of occupancy was issued after January 1st of 2019, then it's six years from the issuance of that certificate of occupancy. And then, of course, every six years thereafter. Okay, so now we're going to go into the compliance timeline. So you've determined your property uh, has E3 elements and inspection is required. This is what your timeline will look like. So if you hire or once you hire your licensed professional, they will submit a report to you. If that report doesn't contain uh, any requirements for corrective work or doesn't identify any uh, immediate hazards, then you just hold on to that report for your records. When the housing department comes around uh, for the SCEP inspection uh, or if a complaint is filed inquiring about it, then you could present it to the inspector at that time. But if no work is uh, required, as mentioned in that, that report from the licensed professional, just hold on to, hold on to it for your records. Now let's go through the scenario that the licensed professional wrote the report and he or she has identified corrective action is necessary. So the professional did their inspection. They're required to submit the report to you within 45 days. Now this is going to be 45 days regardless. So 45 days if uh, corrective action is required and 45 days if no action is required. Let's take the best case scenario. Your building's perfect. There's no action necessary. They still have 45 days to send you that report. But again, uh, if correction action is uh, required, they'll have 45 days to send that to you. Once you receive that report, 
you have 120 days to obtain the necessary permits through the Los Angeles Department of Building and Safety to complete those repairs. Now, since these items are concerning structural members, pretty much, not every time, but pretty close, 99% of the time, for the most part, a permit will be required. Again, I'm gonna to defer to uh, consult with the licensed professional who writes the report, but for the most part, permits will be required to make these repairs. So you get your report, you have 120 days to obtain a permit. Once that permit is issued, you have 120 days to complete the repairs. If the repairs are not completed, then is, it is the responsibility of that licensed professional to notify the Los Angeles Housing Department within 60 days. So essentially, you have from the issuance of the permit, 180 days to complete the repairs. After that 180 days elapses, that professional will perform, uh, will inform the Los Angeles Housing Department. Uh, the Los Angeles Housing Department will receive a copy of that report, set up an inspection. At that inspection, we will verify the permit history. If we see that there are no permits on file, you did not receive the necessary permits to complete the repairs as specified in the report, or perhaps you have the repairs, but they're just not finaled and uh, haven't gotten the full approval from building and safety yet, more work is, is required. Then the Los Angeles Housing Department will issue an, a notice in order to comply. Uh, after the issuance of that notice in order to comply, uh, you will have 30 days to come an, an additional 30 days to complete the report. After which, if the work is not completed at that time, uh, the Los Angeles Housing Department will explore the option to, to either uh, uh, initiate uh, ACE citations, which are administrative uh, citations as required per the state ordinance, or and or uh, enforcement through our typical general manager's hearing process. If substantial progress is noted by the inspector uh, after that notice to comply has been issued by us, uh, there is the discretion on the inspector to grant an extension on the general manager's hearing uh, enforcement aspect. So this, again, is the uh, timeline for the corrective work uh, that is noted by the licensed professional in their report. I'll just leave this up for one second. And again, as I've stated in the beginning, this is another disclaimer. Th this process can change. Uh, the state ordinance does uh, allow local jurisdictions to create local programs in order to enforce this requirement. So LEHD may change the process at a later date if the city of Los Angeles uh, enacts a local ordinance um, uh, after cons uh, we consult with building and safety on this. But for now, this is how it's laid out in the state requirements. Any local ordinance has not been written as of today. Okay, so now let's move on to an emergency condition that is noted. So in this scenario, you've had your licensed professionals uh, conduct the inspection. And that licensed professional has identified an imminent or immediate hazard at the property. If that is the case, then, or an emergency condition. So if that is the case, uh, the professional will have 15 days due to, to the condition noted to notify the Los Angeles Housing Department. After the Los Angeles Housing Department receives that report, we will send an inspector out to the property and issue a two-day order, also known as an urgent order to repair. So what we were looking for with that urgent order to repair is that the imminent threat, as noted by the licensed professional in their report, has been abated. Now, typically with these types of uh, E3 exterior elevated elements, that would mean either temporarily cautioning off the affected areas, so tenants wouldn't have access uh, to that area, so they wouldn't have to walk across it or walk on it if it was their balcony. Um, however, if that is not possible, 
as uh, showed in the example with the exterior uh, exterior walkway serving the upstairs uh, apartments, uh, you wouldn't be able to caution that off because people still need to access their apartments. In that scenario, then you would have to install temporary shoring. So after the LAHD inspection is scheduled and we go out there and issue our order to comply, uh, excuse me, the two-day order, again, we're just looking for that immediate hazard to be abated. So you've cautioned off or you've set up that temporary shoring. So if you have abated that immediate hazard, then you move on to the timeline I just explained for the 180 days, and then we go out there to verify an additional 30 days, and then we explore uh, further enforcement, as long as that immediate hazard has been abated. If the immediate hazard has not been abated after the two-day order has elapsed, one of the provisions of the two-day order or the urgent order to repair is the city has the option to hire a third-party contractor to go out there and make the necessary repairs to abate the immediate hazard and then recoup the cost from the property owner at a later date. However, should uh, you just comply with the two-day order, caution off, put up two-day, uh, put up uh, shoring to abate the hazard, then you can move back onto the uh, the standard timeline under the corrective action. So I will leave this up for a few seconds as well. All right. Here's one example of temporary shoring has been uh, installed. So again, perfect example. We have an exterior balcony walkway that serves the upstairs apartments. You wouldn't be able to caution this off temporarily because the tenants still need to access these this uh, their units essentially. So what you would do in that scenario, again, after consulting with your licensed professional is install temporary shoring as they did in this example. So just a quick recap of this uh, balcony inspection law. The owner of the building shall be responsible for complying with the requirements of the law. The continued and ongoing maintenance of exterior elevated elements uh, in a safe and functional condition in compliance with these uh, provisions shall be the responsibility of the owner of the building. Three or more units that has exterior elevated elements, that's what's going to require this uh, inspection to occur. The inspection must be conducted by a licensed professional as specified earlier. We have our contractors, the architect, the engineers. Uh, the first inspection has to be completed by January 1st of 2025. Exceptions apply if you are a newer property built after January 1st of 2019, then you would wait till six years after the issuance of your certificate of occupancy. And the governing body of any city, county, city, and county uh, may enact ordinance or laws imposing requirements greater than those imposed by this law. So again, I'd like to thank you, everyone, for uh, joining today's webinar. Uh, shortly, you will see, or right now, you should see that a survey has popped up on your screen. Please take the, the a moment to answer that poll, and then we will... Uh, reconvene for question and answer. I will just pause uh, my audio for one second. 